Um, there are there are like uh, there are gender differences. For example, if you go to a conspiracy theory conference or a Holocaust denial conference or creationist conference, it's all guys. It's a guy thing. You go to a, the psychics or Deepak Chopra or Dave Van Prague, it's mostly women there. And so there are these sort of pockets of interest that, that people divide themselves up uh, by gender, geography, or whatever. So uh, uh, we're just sort of casting a broad net. Everybody should be. I don't think of skepticism. It's just science. It's just it's a, it's a scientific worldview, and we live in the age of science. Everybody should be interested. So I'll plug one more time. Join the Center for Inquiry. Uh, after you've gone to skeptic.com and signed up for Skeptic Magazine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, join the Center for Inquiry and come to the reception tonight, and, and we'll have some fun there, yeah? Hi, Mike. Great pleasure to talk with you here in person. Uh, you have been taking some heat from some of the atheist humans and skeptic community over your political libertarian views. Um, and I'm interested, Terry, how did you come to that conclusion and how has skepticism factored into your political beliefs? Okay, so he's bringing up the issue of uh, I'm a libertarian, uh, which I never really made much of a fuss about because I'm not a big political guy, but um, uh, when my webmeister said, you have to start blogging because everybody's blogging and twittering and all this other stuff. All right. <laughs> uh, I've never written anything about libertarianism or my political beliefs anywhere. Uh, it's not a big thing that I've spent a huge amount of time researching. So I just started blogging. And uh, anyway, so I am a libertarian and a lot of skeptics aren't. In fact, most of them aren't. <laughs> so, in fact, the last show of hands I did at the Randy Conference, there's 1,100 skeptics there. Show of hands, how many of you would self-identify as left of center, right of center, or, or libertarian. And uh, so it was about 80% um, left of center, uh, about 19.99% uh, libertarian, and about 0.0001% conservative. <laughs> so I think there was uh, 1,100 people, I think there was four or five hands that went up and I, of, of the how many of you are right of center. So there's definitely a bias there, and I think it's a problem, really. I think um, if we're supposed to be politically neutral, why is there this huge slant? Of course, liberals will say, because we're right. <laughs> And we're educated, and we're smart, and smart, educated people are right. Anyway, that, that's, sort of, um, that's sort of the response you get, or at least that's the, the sense you get. And uh, I think it's okay to be skeptical of political positions, too. We should just throw it all out there and, uh, and be willing to change our minds. Yeah. Um, my question has to do with your stairway of if you memorize the same words, you'll end up hearing them, even if they're not like, visually occurring. I just want to know why is that, and can you like, erase that as well? Oh, yeah, the stairway to heaven backwards. Uh, and once you've heard it a couple times, you don't even need the words on the screen. I don't. I can hear it, uh, every word. Uh, and the reason for that is that, well, it's the priming effect, but we, essentially you've memorized the prime, so your brain is now hearing. It's the same way you recognize songs on the radio you've already heard. It's the exact same process. You've just learned it. Yeah. Can you unlearn it? No, that's, well, no, it's hard. I mean, it's like, don't think about trying to fall asleep tonight when you're trying to fall asleep. Don't think about it. Really, don't think about it. Uh, that's a real serious problem. Yeah, so, um, and that gets at a deeper issue of how do we change people's minds? How do you shift people from one paradigm to another? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, so he re references um, uh, Big Stanger's book, God and Fail Hypothesis, and uh, and uh, doesn't this kind of close the books on the issue? And agnosticism would be an intellectually dishonest position that should go in the dustbin of history. Well, depends what you mean by these terms. <coughs> belief in God, atheist, no belief in God. But strong atheist belief there is no God versus a weak atheist, no belief in a God. See the difference? Belief there is no God is a stronger statement than I just don't believe in God. Uh, and so when Huxley coined the term agnosticism, all he meant was, I really can't definitively say there is no God, because what experiment would we ever run? And I'm not a believer, so I just don't know. And he, but he, he meant it in a way that was unknowable. Agnosticism means unknowable. So it's not like you're waiting, like, ooh, one more experiment's going to tip the scale. Like, if we just had another tree ring data set, that'll tip the scale on the global warming issue, that'll do it. Another ice core data set. No, there is none. There's no more data sets that are going to determine whether there's a God or not. It's just not knowable. I think it's a reasonable position uh, as an ontological statement about the universe. 
behaviorally, no one's really an agnostic, right? I mean, Sunday morning, you get up and you're, you're going to church or you're going on a mountain bike ride, in my case, or whatever you're going to do with your Sunday mornings, you actually behaviorally do something that's based on your, your real beliefs or lack of beliefs. So I, in that sense, I would agree with you behaviorally. Yeah? Uh, to sum it up, uh, yes, no question, other than uh, taking energy, taking But anyway, so there was, uh, you mentioned that you sense the growing demographic for skeptics. Yep. Uh, and that was in response to your question about education. Uh, but I'm wondering if you are aware of any research on changes in media consumption over the last uh, 20 years, 30 years into the 80s, because of the obvious you know, of the internet, where people arguably have access to non-mainstream sources of information. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, elaborate. You, you said you wanted a yes or no. <laughs> Make up your mind, man. So the questions on uh, media changing because of the internet over the last 30 years or so. Yeah, there's tons of research. There's, uh, you know, this is what communications departments do. Um, there are various nonprofit groups, AIM, and there's another one that monitors the left and one monitors the right. Anyway, yeah, there's, there's people that do this for a living. I don't, I don't stay on top of that other than sort of anecdotally. One problem that we have is that there's so much more, so many more uh, channels to fill uh, that they need programming. So, and since I live in LA and all the produ production companies are in LA, uh, they come, they come to me as the token skeptic. And so, like I was talking to one producer of the History Channel last month about 2012. And uh, basically I said, you know, it's 2009. She goes, oh, we're going to milk this baby for all we can. <laughs> we, we got half a dozen specials we're doing. You know, she goes, we know it's bullshit, but you know, this is, uh, we got, we got airtime to fill. And, uh, and I thought, yes, I think we'll do a couple issues of Skeptic on that. That's a good idea. And that's part of it. There's just, uh, in the internet, uh, you know, these two huge films, Zeitgeist, on these conspiracy theories and uh, loose change on 9-11. You know, these have viewership numbers that make Hollywood producers uh, a rule. I mean, of course, they're not paid for it, so, but, um, but yeah, that obviously changes the patterns of belief and that it fuels those sorts of things. Uh, so, yes, we get, you know, I saw on the internet this movie, but, so then we have to respond, so we do. And so we have our own YouTube channel, and we just respond to the media. Um, Right, so on the, the Dover case in Pennsylvania, there's more brush fires in Louisiana and Texas. Yes, yes, and yes. And so uh, that'll never go away. Uh, creationism continues to evolve and mutate into new species, <laughs> which is not supposed to happen, but they do. And uh, <laughs> their arguments uh, continue to uh, become more sophisticated as they get, sh get shot down. They used to focus on the fossil record and the eye and the wing and things like that. Then they got into um, like bacterial flagellum and uh, blood clotting for a while. Now they don't talk about that anymore. They're in the DNA and RNA. Uh, so th they just keep moving the targets as science continues to respond. And I think this is one of the things that irritates me that, uh, about dealing with them uh, in that we know that pseudoscience because they don't respond to the critiques. They publish these books, they go, no one ever responds to it. No, no one ever responds. And so we chug out all these books and articles and we shoot down all of them, big book length treatments. There's dozens of them on every single argument the intelligent design guys have made. And they still say, no one will respond to it. <laughs> Just go to the bookstore. Uh, and, and so but then, instead of responding, going, oh yeah, I was wrong about that. So I'll change that, which is what scientists are at least supposed to do. Uh, they don't. And that's why we know it's not science. Um, of the various debates you've had, which have you found yourself to be most enjoyable or for the general viewer the most um, enlightening of showing both sides of the game and giving a clear position and being understanding the ideas of both of yeah, uh, on the debates I've done, which is the most enjoyable, uh, the ones where I, I just speak alone, that's those are the most. <laughs> uh, debates that require a lot more work, uh, I actually just pay attention uh, to what the guy is saying, and uh, I don't know, I guess um, uh, 
the intelligent design ones have been kind of interesting because I know where they're actually coming from, so when I tip the audience off to what's really going on to their religious beliefs, it's always kind of fun to watch them squirm a little bit. Uh, or sometimes I steal their jokes and use them before they do. And 